Vecna, the lich turned demigod, turned greater deity, turned back to demigod evil villain? This will be a fun video. This video is sponsored by startplaying.games. Have you wanted to play more D&D but you can't find the dungeon master or players to do it? Then check out startplaying.games. This is a matching service between players and game masters. For one shots or longer campaigns, you can even choose specific RPG systems to play. You create a custom profile and use search filters that will put you in contact with the right people. If you can't find the game you specifically want, you can put in a request for it matching DMs with players and vice versa. Plus game masters, if you are so inclined, you can set up a price for your game mastering time and skill. Players can buy a game master's time, allowing the GM to set their own rate. Just browsing, there are some really cool people on the site. A much needed website in the tabletop RPG community, so check it out and go play more games. Hello everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent, and on this installment of D&D Lore, I'll be talking about Vecna, made famous from the Greyhawk campaign setting. Greyhawk was Gary Gygax's original D&D setting, and a lot of these famous heroes and villains come from those modules and early games. Vecna was actually a set of magic items first, and then developed into one of the coolest villains in D&D history. Vecna is an anagram of Vance, specifically Jack Vance, author of The Dying Earth, whose stories heavily inspired the early feel of Dungeons and Dragons. Vecna is not based on mythology or folktale like many monsters in D&D, rather he's an original construction for the Greyhawk setting, an expansive backstory that has evolved several times. It can be a bit much, but we are learned folks though, and remember, I believe in you. Together, we shall understand the vile creature that is Vecna. You might remember Vecna from your favorite Critical Role episodes, or maybe you're just familiar with the legendary artifacts in the DMG, the hand and eye of Vecna. Those artifacts first appeared in Supplement 3, Eldritch Wizardry in 1976. The description was, the soul remains of an ancient lich who was so powerful that he was able to imbue his hand with wondrous, horrible powers, and enabled it to survive even after his long undead body had ceased to exist. The story of Vecna goes all the way back to second edition, where he was the focus of three amazing adventures. Vecna lives in 1990, Vecna reborn in 1998, and die Vecna die in 2000. In the first adventure, there is a section on the history of Vecna, but it is written with truth, contradiction, and misinformation. Vecna is designed to be mysterious. His origins could be very purposeful and engaging, like finding out he was the son of Obi-Wan Kenobi, or you could mess it up and he's Palpatine's granddaughter. Either way, take this mythology with, you know, and change it up for your own game if you wish. Vecna was a human or perhaps half-elf from the earliest historical recordings in Greyhawk. He was a very powerful wizard who was cruel and strict. He used his magic to build and control a great kingdom in Greyhawk. It is rumored his actions are what created the Bright Desert. He was evil and powerful, but old age came for Vecna as it comes for all mortal beings. Vecna defied this and felt it was his right to live forever. He searched long and far to overcome death. There are no accounts, no eyewitnesses to how Vecna became immortal, but he did. Some say he created a spell that allowed him to confront his own death, and in doing so, he imprisoned it. The death of Vecna would never arrive until released by Vecna himself. Others believe he offended the gods of the multiverse so much they cursed him with eternal life, never able to rest and move into the afterlife. Another theory is Vecna was taught dark and forbidden magic from the demon lord Orcus. Afterwards, he experimented with becoming a lich and in doing so transformed himself into the most powerful lich, a perfect lich, perhaps, whatever that could mean. Many believe his secrets are carried in the Book of Vile Darkness, which he wrote certain sections of. Regardless, Vecna's body decayed and withered, but he remained on the Prime Material Plane, and in Greyhawk became known as the greatest of all liches. His name became a Voldemort, and the people that knew of him were scared to speak his name for fear he might be summoned. Known as the Whispered One, the Master of the Spider Throne, the Undying King, and the Lord of the Rotted Tower. Vecna found a young half-demon that he wished to take as an apprentice. His advisors thought this was a bad idea, so he had them all killed, and that new apprentice became known as Aserak. Eventually, Aserak, in awe of Vecna, became a lich as well. 
Later, Aserak created the Tomb of Horrors and was an antagonist in Tomb of Annihilation for 5e and is found on the 5th edition Dungeon Master's Guide. For more info on him in the top right corner and in the description below. Now that Vecna was a lich, he was becoming more powerful and his interests changed. He could take over Greyhawk and rule it, but now with eternal life, he didn't see the end goal. Enter Cass the Bloody Handed. Vecna hired Cass to be a lieutenant who ruled and handed out judgments to the citizens while Vecna researched and became more withdrawn. Cass was given a magical sword called the Sword of Cass, also found in the DMG, and it was a magical weapon crafted like no other. Rumor was that Vecna took the iron from a frozen star and using the flames of the sun forged the Sword of Cass. This was a sign of Cass's authority and the people knew to respect him as they would Vecna. The sword was 100% evil in every way and we don't know if this was an intentional side effect, but the sword was sentient. The sword of Cass would whisper to Cass and tell him he was greater than Vecna, that he should destroy Vecna and be the true ruler of his kingdom. Cass finally did attack Vecna and using the sword of Cass, they battled. No one was witness to this battle, or if they were, they died during the fight. Eventually, the Black Tower of Vecna crumbled to dust. And when the people went looking through the debris, they found the Sword of Cass, Vecna's hand, and Vecna's eye. Cass was never found and was presumably destroyed. However, it was discovered later that he was banished into the Domain of Dread, a place called Cavidius. The Domains of Dread come from Ravenloft, and Cass was transformed from the energy of the plane into a vampire. More on him as the plot unfolds. The Hand and Eye of Vecna have made their magical presence known and wander around the multiverse causing evil and suffering. Attempts to destroy the two final pieces of Vecna proved impossible. Something kept them intact. Some say it is the will of Vecna that doesn't allow these artifacts to be destroyed. With Vecna gone, Aserak was ripe for taking over Vecna's empire, but instead he went off to a swamp, obsessed with becoming a lich. The legends of Vecna, or the relics of his hand and eye, started acquiring worshippers in Greyhawk. The new cult of Vecna grew, and after a long time and a long process, Vecna returned as a minor demigod. Fully immortal now because of his deity status, he was never satisfied and wanted to become a greater god. In order to do this, he needed worshippers and had his followers create some magical items that were planted across a earth, the world of Greyhawk. Once activated, a magical web would be created that prevents other gods from reaching their followers. With worship having no benefits, he would swoop in and become the only deity to be worshipped. In order to succeed though, Vecna needed to find his hand and eye, which were the key components to making the spell work. This is the main plot for Vecna Lives. The introduction of this adventure explains running the module as a horror movie with surprise and suspense. Vecna should be too powerful for the characters to fully attack. You were encouraged to be smart about it. There is a brief section telling the dungeon master to get over their fear of killing characters. If Vecna is going to be the big bad evil guy of the campaign, if he is going to be the ultimate villain, if he is eventually going to be rated the number one villain of all time in Dungeons and Dragons, then it needs to be played seriously. One thing I really enjoyed about Vecna Lives is the game doesn't end with the players losing. Outlined in the end chapters are two scenarios for the players going forward. One where the players save Greyhawk and potentially the universe, and another where they lose. Vecna wins, and the world is changed forever. If you're interested in the second edition adventure, I'll put a link in it in the description where you can pick up a PDF copy. It details some potential quests to destroy the hand and eye of Vecna that I found fun. You could take the eye to the heart of the Sea of Dust and roast it in flames of the oldest red dragon in Earth. The hand could be carried to the positive material plane by one who has never experienced fear, or take both of them to the Golden Forge, which resides in the heart of the Greyhawk Sun. My favorite though is encasing the eye in volcanic glass from hell and shattering it against the Greyhawk crystal sphere via a Spelljammer ship. Stay tuned and subscribe. Next week, we'll talk about the adventures of Vecna Reborn, which continues his story. If you live in the future, you can probably click a link that will take you to the next video. Thanks again, startplaying.games for sponsoring this video. We're all playing more online games, it seems, and startplaying.games lets you find players or dungeon masters in your area or anywhere online. Check them out, make a profile, and start playing games. I'll be back next week with more Vecna. See you all in the next video.